Okay, so over the last two videos, we went ahead and made a replicated uh, blend space, uh, basically our custom rifle animations, and we uh, cleaned them up. So basically our reverse looked pretty good. It didn't have any of the weird glitches and we could move around and we verified that other characters could see it and all looked good. So we pretty much um, were done with our work or so it would seem. Most times when you get to the point to where, okay, everything is working, you are really about halfway there. The other half is optimizing and cleaning things up to get it to where you would say, okay, uh, you would send it off to a code review, something like that, or you know, where a peer review, whatever you want to call it, where somebody would look over your work and see if you have any mistakes. Now they're gonna find; they always find mistakes. You will always have stuff. There will always be a comment. Uh, somebody will have to say to fix. If if you send in uh, a review and and nobody says you need to fix something, then either the reviewer isn't uh, isn't really going through stuff very thoroughly, or you know or you're just that good, but you're never that good because we're all human. We all make mistakes. So, and sometimes it's not even a mistake. It's just like, Hey, I think this would look better, be more legible. So let's go through what we did in our main make direction function, what we did here. And if, if you, uh, you, you got to see the other two videos to really understand what we did, but, uh, you can still watch this video and just get an idea of how you would clean up general uh, code or blueprints um, just just to kind of see how the process would go so first off um, while we didn't do this this was how epic did it um, we're still going to be turning in this class for somebody to review so they're, they're likely going to see how this looks and regardless if you did it or not you should probably clean stuff up now some of it's just opinion but others i think it'll look neater so let's just kind of organize some of these stuff i personally don't like seeing these bubbles here so i'm going to turn these off okay and i like stuff to be in straight lines i don't like things to go down unless it's in a different uh, a different event so if we're in the same event which we are which is our update animation we're going to keep everything in a nice straight line we don't want to have any overlapping things like this here can you bring it down and we have these splits which can be confusing if you had multiple objects it wouldn't know uh, a, a reader, a casual reader would necessarily think they might think you're talking about more than one object when we're really just talking about one. So what we can do, we can bring this down a little. Let's just see how this is going to look. And let's add another node right here. Okay. So we got these three nodes still looks like crap. So we're going to highlight them all hit Q for queen, get some a little bit neater. How are we looking now? We're looking a lot better. Things are a lot more organized. You can shift click over here to get all your nodes and now they're in a nice straight line orderly and that's good. So we'll save. Now let's go into our uh, function. Now you, you could, you could uh, add a comment here and talk about what make direction is. Uh, that would be, that would definitely be handy and we could, we could talk about stuff, but I'm just going to open up and, work on optimizations purely right here. So we went through and we made a local variable and, you know, we thought, well, maybe we'll use that variable, but it turned out we really didn't e end up using it. We just pulled off of here. Um, which is fine. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on as far as if it's actually saving this value. So we have one of two options. We can either pull off of the calculate direction local, or we can pull off of here. So it might be optimal to just pull off our local, our local value. So you can just come into here, grab it like that. And you can either run a node all the way over here, or you can just bring it down like that. This little organization. And it looks a lot cleaner. So you know, okay, we're actually using this variable and it's coming into here. Okay, so now this is definitely a preference thing, but we have these two giant branches. We've only really made two decisions though. We decided in here, or true, we're gonna set it to this or false, we're gonna set it to this. There's a better way to do this. If you drag off this node right here, you can do select. 
And then this little guy right here looks like a pitchfork. Okay, and this kind of works like an in almost like an inline bool or wh whatever. Um, it, it's almost easier to explain so or, or show to to explain. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to set direction with only using one node. Let me show you. Okay, so we we know we want to set direction. But on our true, we want to have this value. So we just control C, control V. Now don't get confused because true and false are flipped from how they are over here. So this is actually going to go down to the bottom. Okay. And this one for false is going to go over here. Okay. Bring it in like. Duh. That's what we're setting. Okay, so for false, we're just setting backward direction into there. And if we're at true, we're setting that into there. And then we can left or control left click, bring that up into here. Once we're sure we did everything appropriately, we can highlight all of this stuff and get rid of it. And then we can take this bring this down here and as you see we don't even need this guy so we can control left click and drag it into here okay and then we can take our condition so it's nice and organized bring it down here take this top level straighten it out bring it down Can move it over however you guys want to organize this I like to keep when you're setting both things under different conditions I like to keep them somewhat in line once again a lot of these are cosmetic but I've found that the majority of things I am required to fix is cosmetic and if you're the only one looking at it it's not a big deal, but if you have more, if you have people looking at your stuff, you want to make sure that it's uh, legible. And let's see, what can we do here to make this better? Basically, I'm just selecting these nodes and pressing Q a lot. Probably don't need uh, that. We can probably just get away with that. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks kind of like crap, so. Let's just extend this there. Bring this over here. Let's straighten that out. That looks better. Okay. And I'm not just being OCD here. These are things that really help people understand what's going on. So you, you, you can tell right away where I set direction. The relatively in line, you don't have to go hunting around and you know I'm setting direction there and you know I'm setting old movement direction here. So if we wanted to make modifications to this though, we could use our comments as kind of more like a tool. So let me show you. Highlight everything and press C and go then zero. Okay. And now you have a handle and I like to color some of this stuff because it's easier to see what you're doing. But you can, now you're moving everything at once. So if you add on to it, or you need to move stuff in different orders, it's a lot easier. We'll do the same down here. We'll call it then one. And you don't have to keep it the same color. I try to stay away from reds and yellows because those I reserve for like, okay, this is, to me, that's alarming. So it's probably something I need to fix later on or it's causing an issue. So I try to stay away from those colors. And of course I do not like the bubbles. And then what you could do over here then is add a whole overall comment saying basically what this does. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it, and you, you got to put a more thought into it than what I'm going to do, but just like, 
uh, makes direction, uh, fixes bug that caused the legs to jitter by uh, uh, comparing to last frame direction. Now you could you could. Do a, put a lot more in there, make it a lot more clear, have a lot less typos, but that's going to be up to you to articulate what manner you think is best. And uh, there's an engine setting. You can turn that direction thing off, but okay. There's a weird Unreal bug that will cause these things to look slanted when they're not. But there you go. So you got, you got the basic idea. This this is if you had more, a little more detailed co comments, this would be uh, pretty acceptable. As something you could say, uh, hey, why don't you look this over and make it even better? So go to our event graph. You could do similar things here. You could put an additional comment here saying, uh, here's what make direction does, and then and then you could even color code these to make it easier to read because it just it's it, the gray on gray. It's not very easy to read. So s since we did that, we need to double check what we did. And if you remember in our blend space over here, the way we detected whether it was working or not is setting that interpolation to zero because it'll make defects in our uh, backwards calculations obvious. So anytime you make a change, you should definitely go into here. So you can definitely tell our interpolation is lower, but we're not getting crazy legs like we were getting before. And we can make sure we didn't screw up anything as far as, um, you know, being able to see it on the other, with the other client. So there you go. Uh, we got to make sure we turn our debug or not our debug, but our interpolation back to what we had it. That's an easy one to forget. You set things for debug mode or when you're debugging and then you submit it and then all of a sudden people are having your settings that were trying to find flaws or print strings everywhere. And that's the other thing you should always, uh, if you use print strings, which let me show you what the, how that would look. Um, you can set it to just be on all, when you're done. You could, if you wanted to leave this in here for whatever reason, it was giving you logging information. You can always tell it to just print to the log rather than print to your screen because you can get a you can quickly get a lot of garbage on your screen. Um, but I wanted to bring this up while we were here. Um, this thing is firing on all client and servers, and that's why you're seeing the replication occur. And you can you can you should always whenever you have an event and you're not sure how a class works, you should hook up a print string to it so you can see exactly who who's running that event. And you can see everybody's running the event. You can see that the server's running it, you can see that the client's running it, client one and client two, since we have two clients and a server. So that's how when we do we're making everybody run everybody for everybody is running these calculations. So that's why you're able to see it. Um, amongst the other clients. Uh, but this really helps give you a good visualization of who's running what, and I recommend you do it on every uh, thing. This is why when some people are having issues with they're trying to spawn bullets or whatever from their weapon, and they're like, why do I have two? Well, it's because your server spawning one uh, from an event, and so is the client, and that is not good. That's when you would need to use like a has authority node or something like that when, when in regards to spawning. But we'll get into that stuff more. I just wanted I just wanted to give you guys a real quick video of how you could clean something up. And we're definitely going to appreciate this down the road if, when we need to make modifications, turn things off, and just to keep organized. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.